EFF MPs could face action in the House for stalling the State of the Nation address in February. Remember that? Well, they objected to the presence of former President F. W. de Klerk. At least 18 of the party's MPs are also set to face possible sanction for storming the podium in July last year in an attempt to block the Public Enterprises Minister Pravin Gordon from delivering his budget vote address. Both those matters were before Parliament's Powers and Privileges Committee today for discussion. Parliamentary reporter Lindsay Dentlinger has been following those proceedings for us. Lindsay, good afternoon to you. So let's start, first of all, with the uh, Sona incident. What exactly is set to unfold in that matter? And I'm wondering as well how the EFF has responded. Good afternoon, Jeremy. Well, the lockdown notwithstanding, this seems it's going to be quite a protracted uh, matter. First at issue today, the Powers and Privileges Committee receiving an external legal opinion as to whether, in fact, they even have the jurisdiction to take any kind of action against uh, the EFF and its MPs. Um, firstly, uh, the Speaker didn't name particular MPs that the committee should look at. She just said that the conduct of the party uh, should be considered as to whether they have breached uh, any of the rules of the House and the Powers and Privileges and Immunities Act. And so that's really where it's uh, started and not gone very far, other than the legal opinion um, telling this committee that they do, in fact, have the jurisdiction. But it's critical, Jeremy, to point out in this incident is that it has not been determined that they actually uh, breached the rules of the House. Um, and um, the opinion saying that this, they first needed to give the EFF MPs involved in this matter the chance to present their side of the story before it can be determined whether in fact they breached any of the rules of the House. Uh, the EFF's Bjorsen in uh, happens to be a member of this committee and in answer to your second question uh, Jeremy, uh, saying that he doesn't agree with this legal opinion, doesn't believe that the Speaker uh, had acted properly when she referred this matter to the committee saying that she had to identify individuals whom she thought uh, had breached the rules and she, that the party couldn't as it were be tried as a party uh, and he has warned the committee that in the past when this committee has dealt with issues uh, of discipline involving this party that they've been found wanting in the courts and by his opinion he reckons this is going to be the case again now let's rewind if we can to july last year that incident that i've referenced involving pravin gordon uh, it got physically out of hand it, it it was ugly what will parliament be doing about that it was rather an ugly matter, Jeremy. And uh, again, I mean, this happened way back in July uh, last year. Um, and where they're at uh, right now is that a um, advocate of the Cape Bar has agreed to take on this case as an initiator um, in terms of uh, the proceedings that are likely uh, to unfold. At this point, none of the EFF members have actually been charged uh, with any contravention. Uh, the video footage, Jeremy, um, has been handed to this advocate. She's had a look at at it. Parliament's had a look at it to identify who the MPs uh, might be. Um, there were at least 20 MPs involved in that incident. Two of them have since resigned uh, from Parliament. So at least 18 of them could face some type of charges. But what those are, Jeremy, we still don't know. It will be up for the advocate uh, to have a look at that in conjunction with the committee and for this Powers and Privileges Committee now to work on a program um, and to actually take get to the point where they actually charge MPs and then determine what the process is going to be uh, the way forward in terms of possibly disciplining them for that action. So we will wait and see. Parliamentary reporter Lindsay Dentlinger uh, in Cape Town. Thank you. Still to come.